Hello and welcome back to this series on Docker. In the last couple of videos, we went over creating the Docker Compose YAML file. And now we're ready to execute that file and build out our microservice to application and see how it worked out. So let's get to it. So let's do a really quick recap of our Docker Compose file. We started off with creating a version, which I had mentioned is an optional element, but good to have in your Docker Compose file. We created our services section in which we created a WordPress service, put in our image, how often we want to restart, added some environment variables in order to allow us to connect to our database, et cetera, from the WordPress microservice, exposed our ports and attached a volume. Then we created a database service, put in our image, when we wanted to restart, the same type of variables that matched and our volume. And finally, we added a sidecar container that from the back end we can administer our MySQL database. And this was just put in there to add that extra little bit of complexity to make this a fully manageable application. And then finally here at the bottom, we have the volumes that we created within the Docker engine called WordPress and WordPress DB. So let's return to our Windows subsystem for Linux. And we're currently in our home directory under our projects directory in that WordPress. Now, if we take a look at the contents, we have our Docker Compose YAML that we were just looking at and reviewing. So what we'll simply do now is enter in the docker compose command with the argument up. And we're going to say in detached mode, similar to our docker command where we did a dash D to bring our container up in detached mode. And simply hit enter. You'll see that it's going to go ahead and pull the WordPress container down. And I believe that the image that I was using prior was not at the same version as this one. So here it goes. Pulling down the MySQL database, grabbing the PHP my admin. You see it here creating the containers itself and it's done. I'll go ahead and clear the screen. And we can do a docker ps and hit enter and we see that we have three containers up and running they've been up for a few seconds now and we have a small microservice application with wordpress running and uh, let's go ahead and test that so i'll go ahead and i'll minimize this window and bring up google chrome and in here we can go ahead and go to localhost port 8080. Because if you remember from our Docker Compose, we exposed port 8080 into port 80 on our container. So coming back, I'll hit enter. And here we are. Now, while before we continue with this, I'll go ahead and click over to a new tab and I'll do a localhost on port 8090. And if you remember, wrong window. If you remember here, we have port 8090 going to port 80 inside of our container. So coming back here, I hit enter here and the PHP my admin console comes up. So let's continue back to the WordPress and actually configure this to see some persistence in our application. Okay, so let's do one last thing before we go ahead and play around with our WordPress database. If we come back to the subsystem for Linux, if I type in here, Docker volumes, LS for listing. Now this is again, this is not Docker Compose, this is part of Docker and it's just volume. When I hit that command, 
Docker is going to show me the volumes that I have on this drive. And I have a couple of volumes already created from past videos or past elements that I've done that are uh, have these hashes. However, at the very bottom here, you can see the WordPress underscore WordPress and the WordPress DB. These are the two volumes that will hold all of our persistence inside the Docker engine versus that bind mount that we had discussed earlier in the previous videos. So now that we see this, we can uh, go ahead and go back to our WordPress and begin configuring it. We can go ahead and start by entering in a site title, which I'm going to say learning with NetMet, and then the username. Now from here, I'm going to go ahead and go back to our Docker Compose, and I'm going to find our username, which is WordPress admin. I'm going to copy that and paste it in as our username. And then for the password, I'll go back again, copy this out, come back to the WordPress, paste that in. And then for an email, we could say admin at learningwithnetnet.com, something, anything like that. This is not a real email, so don't try and write to it. And then, uh, you know, this doesn't really matter. I'm going to go ahead and click on the install WordPress. So we successfully did that. We're going to go ahead and log in. We'll log in again with our WordPress admin and our password, which I believe is still in my clipboard. And I go ahead and I log in. And here we are, we have our site up and running. We can go ahead and play around with WordPress at this point. So now let's go over to our PHP My Admin and log in here. So in order to log in, we're going to need to know what our server name is and our username and password. So the username and password we already have, we have it written here, our username and our password. However, what is our server? So let's find that out. Let's go ahead and minimize everything here. Bringing up our Ubuntu shell, I'll do a Docker PS. That'll show us our three containers that are running. They've been up for about 36 minutes now. And the container that I want to connect to is going to be the MySQL 5.7 container. So I'm going to go ahead and use this container ID right here. And I'll copy it. Then I'm going to go ahead and do a Docker inspect on that container. When I hit enter here, it just happens to be that the networking information is at the bottom of the JSON file that's outputted here. So we don't have to grep out any specifics here. We can just immediately just look and see that the container's internal IP address is 1802. However, that could change. So I don't want to use that consistently. What I do want to use, though, is the alias right here called database. So we can use that to connect to our MySQL backend. So bringing back the MySQL backend, let's minimize this. The server is going to be that database alias that we found. The username is going to be WordPress admin that we had found before. And coming back to our Docker Compose, let's just copy back in our MySQL password and place that in. And then when we hit go, we should, boom, get into our database through our sidecar admin container. And you can see here that our WordPress-DB is actually here with all the components that WordPress utilizes in the back end. Now, we don't want to mess with any of this. However, just for sake of the fullness of this microservice application, you can see how all three containers are working together. And now I can update each one individually and do what I need to and not affect the others. So let's do one last thing. I'll go ahead and minimize this. I'm going to clear the screen here. I'm going to do a Docker Compose down. When I do this, 
I'm going to tell Docker Compose, hey, bring down all my containers. So it'll stop the containers one by one and bring everything down. If I do a Docker PS now, I have nothing running. So I'll go ahead and issue a Docker Compose up dash D again here to bring these containers back up. Now this is going to bring back up three brand new containers. So our hope is, is that it persists. So let's minimize this, go back up to here, click over here and just refresh the screen. And you can see that I'm already logged in. I'm in a brand new container. However, everything is still there. I'm still good to go. And here as well, if I click anything, I got logged out here. But if I go ahead and do, let's do that database alias again, WordPress admin, and let's run back and grab our password. Pop that back in and hit go and up we come. And I'm actually looking at one of the tables inside of our database here. That was where I would last left off when we were playing around. So we are good to go. We have a full fledged WordPress application running locally on our system. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. Uh, in the next video, I'll go ahead and deploy this to AWS. And that way we can actually see this working in real world application um, inside of AWS. So please like and subscribe. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.